Welcome to Peel Healthy Lifestyles. My name is Yadwinder Mutta, and today we're going to talk again uh, with another one of our guests uh, who's involved in the community and their focus uh, is actually arts. And so, you know, with Peel Healthy Lifestyles, we want to focus on health, fitness, and technology. We want to showcase what's happening within the region of Peel, all the different organizations, uh, the different businesses, the different uh, people that are doing anything related to health, fitness, and technology. And again, this is in uh, conjunction and, and also to promote Peel Healthy Lifestyle Show, which is happening on Saturday, September the 15th at the Brampton Soccer Center. So today, joining us in the studio, we're going to have Anis Karpenko. She is the Executive Director of Visual Arts Mississauga, or VAM. And I just want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us in the studio, and thank, thank you for joining you. us on Peel Healthy Lifestyles. Thank you so much. Perfect. So maybe, uh, Anis, where we can start is, uh, you know, what's your background, and how did you really get into, I guess, arts, and how did, what kind of led you into VAM, and like, just kind of give mm -hmm. us a little bit of background. Yeah. Yourself. Um, well, I, I, I was blessed to have a creative family and uh, that loved music and dance, so I okay. got to partake in a lot of things as a kid, uh, piano lessons and dance. And But my high school love into university was theater. Oh, okay. And uh, I worked backstage and building sets and doing all that. And loved that very much. Okay, fantastic. Um, and then uh, spent many years doing the ultimate creativity of being a mom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's right. To two <clears throat> lovely daughters. Um, but then I went back. I was always um, working on my own art. I was a photographer for okay. quite a bit of time and did some ex exhibitions and, and then looked for something different because I sort of felt like my world had shrunk down to the, okay. to the size of a lens. Right. And I was trying to open it up. So I started painting and doing some mixed media okay. work. Uh, with my photographs, That's and awesome. in 2012, I uh, went back to school to do a master's in fine arts Fantastic. Okay. in interdisciplinary art, which really looks at process and intention in multi formats and multi mediums. Okay. So, Just really quickly, if someone doesn't know what interdisciplinary means, what does that mean? It's basically taking all the arts together and finding ways for to weave them. So I. My other work is as a writer, okay. so I was doing a lot of writing and visualing, visual work, okay. but we were also collaborating with dancers and actors and musicians in kind of building pieces uh, of work that spoke to many different mediums and okay. different arts. And um, it, was, it was a very exciting two and a half years. So. Fantastic. Yeah. And so, so that background, not only is there uh, dance, but then there's photography and art. Yeah. Uh, so how did uh, how did you come across uh, VAM or Visual Arts Mississauga? How did that all yeah. kind of take shape? Uh, well, my work um, pretty much for my whole life has been administrative and multi disciplines, really. Okay. In education, I worked up at York University for oh, a while. Okay. Um, I worked in Quebec for a bit. And so this job came up in... 2014 in Mississauga. Okay. Uh, I had lived in Toronto for 20 years, so I knew the area, and it merged all the things I loved, which was visual art. Right. And um, we're blessed. The VAM is located in the middle of a 150-acre conservation park, okay. run by the Credit Valley Conservation Authority and uh, the Riverwood Conservancy. Okay. So um, my love of nature, my love of art. It, my, my ability to be a good administrator right. all kind of came together. So. Fantastic. It sounds like, uh, well, that would, I think, naturally just lead uh, any artist, uh, yeah. once you're in 150 acres of conservation, will oh. just lead to a lot of creativity. Absolutely. So just for some of our listeners uh, and watchers who may not know, what is VAM? What's Visual yeah. Arts Mississauga? What is it? Uh, well, Visual Arts Mississauga was started in 1978 by okay. a group of uh, artists in the area that belong to different organizations. And it became kind of the the arts, the visual arts council at the time. Okay. Um, since then, we're now uh, we've had a couple of different locations, but since two thousand and five, we've been at Riverwood. Okay. And uh, we run about two hundred visual arts classes a year for wow. children ages six, and then all the way up to ninety six. Uh, wow. Okay. You're never too old. Yeah, you're never too old. Of um, course. And along with that, we have uh, exhibitions in our galleries with, okay. for our members that, that they show their work either as group shows okay. or individually. We run three big events. Um, our other big event is the day after the Peel Healthy Lifestyles show, and it's our Art in the Park. 
okay. on September 16th, and we have 45 uh, artists, vendors wow. in the park, in our building. Uh, there's a Fantastic. historic barn on the site. Okay. And, um, and then we do an outreach program called Artreach, where we're, uh, our Artreach schools is in about 81 Peel Region schools. So many of the, Fantastic. many kids may have actually partaken of our programs as part of their regular school curriculum. Right, right. Okay. Um, and then uh, in 2015, we started Outreach for Older Adults, and that really okay. started to speak to the health and well-being of right. adults as they grow older and they have less ability to get out. So right. we were working with Pill Senior Link on that, okay. and um, we ran, uh, tw I think, 12 programs, and we've been running them since then. We've got a crossing our fingers for a grant coming up for Fantastic. another 36 workshops. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of programs that uh, VAM is involved with. Yeah. Uh, how big is the organization? How many people are involved? How many volunteers, yeah. employees? It sounds like it must it, be a really big... Well, uh, it's not that. We, okay. we have five full-time okay. and wow. three part-time, and okay. so we do a lot. Right. Um, okay. We have about 25 professional artists instructors that come in and teach wow. the programs Fantastic. for us. Okay. Okay. Um, we have about 72 volunteers. We have, we're run by a volunteer board of directors. Okay. And um, we have 500 members, and each term, uh, and there are four, we go seasonally. Okay. And we have about 1,000 students or people wow. partaking in the programs, and somehow we're just coming. This is our last week of summer camp. Right. We run a nine-week nine summer camp program. Okay. And um, for kids and... Yeah, so Fantastic. there's lots. That's a uh, that's a uh, quite uh, extraordinary actually. With the uh, just a handful of people, the actual outreach are able to do. We have an um, amazing team. Yeah, it yeah, sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you can share uh, to some of our viewers the connection of how art relates to wellness, to mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can share kind of that mm -hmm. connection. Yeah. Uh, well, certainly at a young age. I mean, we we there's so many studies done now about how art, music, um, dance, performing art really help children okay. uh, in schools, A, focus on their other curriculum, right. but also gives them an opportunity to, um, I would say artists see the world in a really special way. They right. find beauty in things that maybe not everybody would notice. That's right. And it can be something that somebody else might consider ugly, like rust on buildings right. and right. things like that. They can find something extraordinary. Definitely. So it enhances, really, a way of looking at the world right. okay. at a young age. Um, as you get older, it cr creates an opportunity, um, certainly among youth, for self-expression yes. that they right. may not always have um, if they're kind of stuck in other courses. So right. they have a way to showcase their talent as singers, dancers, painters, drawers, uh, going up to even a lot of the kids that draw go into tattoo art. Right, you know, right, like definitely. there's a lot of okay. segue into that. Certainly filmmaking yes, uh, right. and storytelling, right. yes. which is so integral to youth and, and being able to tell their story and right. sharing it um, with other people. So that builds a, a really good sense of okay. mental health, mental well-being, right. finding a tribe, right. which I think right. is so critical exactly. at that age. Exactly. Um, is there any facts around how art might be tied with wellness, mental health? Oh, I'm, I think you could just Google right. mental health and right. art and you'd find okay. a, million, a million studies. Right. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot. Okay. And it's, it really, part of it is Finding, I think when we were talking before, you were talking about your art teacher, Mr. Right. Mueller. Mr. Mueller, yes. And um, many times students that feel uh, left out or they're not part of the norm stream, they find that teacher who sees their talent Definitely. and encourages them, Definitely. whether it's in writing, whether it's in storytelling, whether right. it's in art, music, and uh, playing an instrument, dance. Right. Um, the sense of... Uh, self-awareness but then worthiness right. and confidence that can be built when somebody sees that exactly and nurtures and it in you and i think that's some of the exciting part now is uh sometimes i uh, jokingly tell my daughter is like i wish i was in school now you have yeah. access to so much stuff yeah uh, she's just about to start grade six at SciTech program so she's so excited 
She's going to be uh, 3D printing, it's robotics, yep. uh, and an That's enhanced amazing. arts program. Um, you know, it's, uh, when I grew up, uh, I went to school, it was just, there was art class, and there was uh, industrial arts class. That's kind of dating myself. <laughs> and, uh, and that was really it. And there was nothing, there was no art club after right. school, and none of that stuff really existed. Right. But now, there's so much more opportunity uh, that uh, everyone has, uh, especially the young uh, young youth who are coming up Absolutely. and the exposure that they have to the different yeah. uh, different kinds of art Absolutely. as well. Now, uh, is there uh, anything uh, that you kind of have uh, in the pipeline that you, you would like to maybe have some collaborative efforts uh, that you're trying to work uh, and try to make uh, some partnerships in the community, mm -hmm. something like that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that VAM is trying to do just kind of mm -hmm. expand the outreach? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're blessed in Mississauga to have a really vibrant uh, arts community okay. and we meet as I said every month we have a group um, called the third Monday collective okay. that meet every month just to see what opportunities as I've said right. I like to call it cross-pollination right. what cross-pollination ideas and opportunities right. there might be for each of the group right. uh, VAM does and has done for 32 years a jury uh, show okay. of art and it's always hosted for the last 32 years by the Art Gallery of Mississauga. Wow, okay. So that's become a long-term partnership, Fantastic. but we find other ways, Heritage Mississauga, other organizations where okay. we can meet. And our outreach program, um, we are aligned with Peel Senior Link. Okay. Um, we run a Creative Kids Camp Fund. So every summer we um, have 10 kids that are in financial need okay. that have been um, identified by schools around us okay. or Pill Children's Aid, they get a free camp week. So, um, you know, we do okay. the best to work with the community in right. the ways that we can. Okay. Um, well, also Perfect. sustaining the organization, exactly. right? Uh, so a little bit earlier you mentioned um, uh, your show that's happening on the 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can share a little bit more uh, with our viewers uh, so that they understand what's happening on the 16th, what you're referring to. and. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they could take advantage and yeah, come out and participate and support the event. Yeah, that would be great. So it's called Art in the Park. I think this is our 26th year maybe, or maybe 28th. Um, and we have uh, artists from around Ontario actually. They wow, don't, okay. it's more GTA right. scope. Right. Uh, so it's a wider range of artists that come and display their creativity creative works right. for sale and for show. Okay. Um, we've got food trucks, we have musicians that come and play during the day. We okay. have a youth installation component where um, some of our young artists are for that day creating a piece. Um, okay, right on the spot. Right, right on the spot, That's yeah. Fantastic. yeah. Okay. Amazing. So it's really, and, and the park is beautiful, the McEwen Terrace Garden, which is uh, run, operated and, and What's the word I want? It, that is totally nurtured by the city of Mississauga okay. Parks team. It's just the most beautiful garden um, okay. to walk through. So right. it's a lovely, it's a lovely space. So. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, and uh, earlier we were talking, and you mentioned uh, the Third Monday Collective. Maybe you can share a little bit about that as well. Yeah. In in the fall of 2015, um, and it came out of a, a group called the Business for the Arts that had run a, a year-long program with some of the arts organizations. Okay. And I, I, I'm sure this goes for any community where you know there's uh, some, oh, VAM's over there, and oh, Living Arts Center's over there, and oh, the Art Gallery's over there, and Heritage Mississauga, and the Arts Council. So you know the organizations exist, but you don't know the people behind them. Right. And you don't create the opportunities to meet and find um, ways to either come together if you're working on a municipal project right. or you're looking at uh, approaching council, city okay. council for right. some new ideas or new funding. Um, so we started to meet once a month and we said, let's see. Right. And I think the first, I don't know, three months, uh, there was probably eight of us or 10 of us okay. that would come together. Right. Um, there's now 102 on the mail list. Wow. I think there's 45 different either organizations or uh, individual Religious. artists. Wow. Um, okay. They don't all come every month, right. but it's always running, you know, except for the summer. So right. you know if you've got something to share or you're looking for some opportunity, you can appear. And it's starting to branch out a little bit. I think at some point, um, 
uh, you know, in inviting other non-arts groups or finding right. partnerships and ways. One of the biggest things for any place is space, finding right. affordable space for artists to work or to practice or rehearse. Right. And um, so we worked with the city of Mississauga and with other groups just to find a way find a room, right. to help artists do that. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any, in closing, is there anything uh, that you'd like to uh, add, something may, we may not have talked about uh, that you may find uh, might be important to share with the viewers? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, one of the things, the Art Reach for the Older Adult Program, um, I always like to share this story, this dear woman, we, we went into senior homes okay. and um, centers, and um, some people had never done art. Really? And okay. all of a sudden, people that had been kind of where their support workers were saying, oh, they weren't coming out coming and they out, weren't right. joining kind of in. Right. Okay. All of a sudden, they were looking forward to it every week. Okay. And um, my favorite line is this beautiful woman who said, when I came to Canada, I didn't know how to make any art. And she held up her picture and said, and now I am Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> and so Fantastic. the sense of pride in, right, of, of that is tremendous. That is. And um, there, you're never too old, you know. Right. And, and really, as young as you can be, a lot of the grandparents, you know, older adults, right. were suddenly doing art. And then their grandchildren were saying, oh, well, you're doing that. I did this at school. And they're, it's a point of conversation. Bridging so. generations using oh, art. That's it's, fantastic. It's tremendous. That's, yeah. uh, that's amazing because uh, digital generations, our uh, modern, our tagline is uh, building generations using technology. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we do. We help connect, uh, get our prime timer, uh, the seniors group online, yep. and connected oh, with their uh, grandchildren. And those oh. are some of our biggest success stories: is yeah. grandparents connected with grandchildren yeah. using technology. Phenomenal. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so, Anis, I want to really thank you for coming to thank the studio. You, Nick. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us on the Feel Healthy Lifestyle Show. Thank you. Uh, and if uh, viewers want to uh, see Anis, she's going to be with us on one of our discussion panels talking about art. Uh, and how integral it is for uh, mental health and just wellness in general uh, at the Peel Healthy Lifestyle Show, which is happening Saturday, September 15, uh, at the Brampton Soccer Center. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So once again, Anis, I want to thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Thanks and so much. Thank you for coming here and sharing Thanks. them. Uh, I look forward to the show. Perfect. Thank you.